As Simon says, I'm Lorna Stimson. I'm from LABC. I'm Deputy Chief Exec. Um, LABC is the membership organisation that looks after local authority building control surveyors and teams. Um, I'm going to disagree slightly with Tom. Um, good, yeah. Um, in, in, in much of what he says. Um, I come from a, a supposed regulatory background, so I deal with all contractors, all developers, all builders, um, and I think Dame Judith has got it absolutely bang on. I think the industry is ignorant and do, is indifferent. Um, maybe people in this room aren't, and so please don't take offence at what I'm going to have to say this morning, um, but I'm afraid that is um, a fact, and I think that what she uncovered as part of um, her review um, was all of those things. So, so nobody in this room, I'm sure you're all um, very competent and very professional, but that's not um, the, the life that, um, and the experience of local authority building control, I'm afraid. So, uh, by profession, I'm a building surveyor and I've worked for 20 years in building control in North Manchester. Um, I've worked on schools, hospitals, commercial schemes, <laughs> and lots of housing. I knew you needed to use my flicker for me because already I've forgotten to move on. So, um, so commercial schemes and lots of housing, much of it delivered in diverse communities and helping people with limited means and little experience. I've prosecuted and been threatened by rogue traders, or we could call them criminals, um, I've been on my own in the middle of the night, having to decide how to protect firefighters and the public from dangerous structures. I've closed main roads into Manchester because a truck demolished the front of a building and was the only thing that was holding it up. And I still had a councillor who ran his own sweet shop saying, which idiot did that? Well, I was the idiot who did that. So yes, I've been in the service of, public, of the public doing local authority building control, and I was very proud of my role. I could have earned an awful lot more money in the private sector, but I believed in what I was doing. Now I'm encouraging others to do the same in my national role for LABC as Deputy Chief Executive. As well as leading our careers, recruitment and training, I've also been working with our members to put safety back into a public service that's been badly affected by competition, the red tape challenge, years of austerity and woolly performance based system. Does that mean I'm a traditional policing regulator? Not at all. I'm a moderniser who craves efficient working but wants defined goals standards and professionalism shared by all of the industry. Standards aren't the outcome of building control. They're the input of all professionals dedicated to protecting the golden thread. From the first building, control, building concept through all the stages of design, procurement and construction until final handover for maintenance and management, the golden thread of fire safety has to be understood and protected it can't be value engineered away. It can't be compromised by untrained tradespeople. It can't, site managers can't substitute products with lower specifications because su supply de delays and budget constraints. That's what happens. Today, other speakers are going to cover the details of the Hackett Review. The review is the biggest challenge to the construction industry in the last three decades. So I am going to talk about that as well. But I want to focus on what I think it will mean to different groups, including LABC and you. There is going to be a fundamental change. There has to be a fundamental change. Dame Judith must have been astounded. She came from a chemical engineering world where projects are managed with the same discipline as medicine and aviation to a world more like the Wild West, to be honest. As she points out, there was a seemingly inescapable downward spiral. Others had seen it too. There were all party parliamentary groups investigating the reducing quality of new homes. So it wasn't a new concept. She also observed that design and build meant make it up as you go along. 
and she said that in a couple of speeches that I've heard her give over the last 18 months. She also saw, as Tom said, that international experience didn't feed back into policy. So building fires in Garnet Court, Lacknell House, an incident seen around the world in China, Dubai, Russia and Australia didn't ring any alarm bells in the minds of policy makers or ministerial advisers. That's quite shocking, isn't it? We were all watching it on the news and none of us were twigging that there was an issue. Strange. Initially, Dame Judith mapped the existing system for quality and compliance and found it so complicated it couldn't fit onto a sheet of A3 and nobody could agree a route through that would actually guarantee the right or safe outcome. In many ways, I'm really saddened looking back at my career and seeing that the lives of LABC has become focused on the survival of our service. We were stuck trying to retain business and fight off competition. Many of my colleagues had sleepless nights trying to balance income against the risks of reduced inspections and enforcement activities. Like many of you, you we would be told that compliance had to fit the budget. Also, we were totally stuck on the horns of competition. When we were stuck on our technical principles, the people commissioning projects would frequently turn around and say, well, if you don't agree, we'll shop around until we find a approved inspector who does. And that's with no disrespect to approved inspectors. They're in the same boat as we've been over the last 30 years. I'll give an example. Just a few miles west of here in London, a colleague was asked to give a building control price on a large development of three tower blocks. Each of those tower blocks was over 10 storeys, so they were Dame Judith's definition of HRRBs. The well-known company specified building control, and they asked for 10 inspections. So my colleague was puzzled when asked for a quote, and, and telephoned the developer and asked, what do you mean by 10 inspections? Do you mean per week? Per apartment, per day? The answer was no, they wanted 10 in total across the whole project. You'll no doubt have noticed that I'm quite northern and we know how to give a frank response up north. Um, well, I'm pleased to say that my London colleague also gave a very frank reply. And I promise you that this is true that later that local authority received an initial notice for an approved inspector for the same job. We can only assume on the same terms. That's quite worrying, isn't it? Ten inspections. Dame Judy soon understood that competition compromises standards and regulatory functions. So one of her fundamental recommendations became, you can't choose your regulator. Why on earth did we ever think it was a good idea in the first place? She also, perhaps to the annoyance of the select committee, who just wanted prescriptive public clarity on banning of combustible materials, stuck to her view that there had to be a complete new system, not just more layering of additional rules. So she looked at a fundamental review of our system, not just sorting out that one issue. That, that we clearly had, that the world had, to be fair. At LABC, we absolutely supported her view. The old system hasn't been working for years, and any organisation commissioning construction could very easily find a route to the least compliance, the least compliance at the least cost. Having looked at today's delegate list, I think many of you will be radically affected by the recommendations of Dame Judith's report. Either you or someone close to you will become embedded in the compliance chain as the duty holder. And secondly, your own organisation will have to become an active supporter of compliance and not simply a passive observer. This is part of the wider culture change that Dame Judith talked to us about. To help you just think about how radical the changes may be in the way that you work let, uh, and the duty and responsibilities you've had, you'll have, let me describe the impact on LABC. <coughs> to be fair, we recognised um, a year before Grenfell that we needed to do something, that we needed to look at 
the competency and the way in which local authority building control worked. Our members were describing the construction industry and the tangled web of commissioning, design, specification, tendering, subcontracting as the Wild West. Worse still, we were becoming completely embroiled in it ourselves, even though we were officially the regulators. So back in 2016, we changed our constitution to create a new standards committee, independent of our board, with the option of an independent chair. At the time, we committed our organisation to an investment of over half a million pounds to create our own virtual learning environment. This logically meant that we had to define all the competencies required for our surveyors from the bottom right up to the top. So we started with trainees and went through the career grades, right to those working on high-rise, high-risk and complex buildings, those covered by our most qualified and experienced people. And then we needed external help. So we joined forces with the Institution of Fire Engineers, the University of Wolverhampton and the CIOB to produce accredited learning, examinations and an apprenticeship funded degree. But that still wasn't enough. We also had to create quality um, and a locking by adding a single national quality management system for all local authority building control with a UCAS audit and an independent ISO organisation. So this meant that we defined what surveyors needed to know, examined their current competency, because we don't believe that qualifications equal competency. I'm very qualified, whether I'm very competent is something that would need to be proven. So we built competency into the management of our building control teams and we measured that right back to the people um, and, and the assignment to individual projects. And backing this up with other processes to ensure that building control was being properly managed and recorded. My point to you all is that it sounds easy to say, but actually it's been incredibly demanding in an awful lot of ways. So it meant a high degree of transparency, a clinical inward look and examination and criticism of our own practices and behaviours. It needed honesty to say to teams and individuals that they weren't up to the mark. It needed urgency and a commitment to find the money and resources to measure the whole organisation, put in new policies and then provide the support to bring about change quickly. <coughs> there was a loss of comfort and by that I mean it's not comfortable telling colleagues at the top of their career that they've been measured and they've been found wanting. They're not quite up to the mark. That's difficult to say and it's difficult to hear. A few people decided that it wasn't for them and told us in a very northern way that, uh, that they didn't want any involvement in that. So because we're a membership organisation, introducing a whole new regime took a really brave step. So who else is doing this? Have other bodies, institutions and associations been doing what LABC has done? And to be fair, as far as I can judge, I don't think many have yet. I think they're waiting to be told what to do. There are lots of people spending many hours in committees, and I'm one of them, but dare I say it, there are lots of wise words being spoken, but not quite so much action. And if I'm really cynical, I'd say that some trade organisations are more focused on their self-interest than being self-critical and transparent. Many organisations don't want change and would like to see the Minister's promise to deliver Hackett lost in the long grass. Do you? Because I certainly don't. Dame Judith learned a lot when she was involved in reviewing corporate health and safety. Um, the duty holder role could be the key to everything not going to be comfortable for many people in the room, but it means that the individual commissioning and their organisation will have their necks on the block. Duty holders, in my opinion, will have to ensure that those working for them are competent and will follow the same ethical codes to protect the golden thread. The golden thread. This will start in planning, go through detailed design, specification, procurement, construction and handing over stages and then onwards into building occupation. 
It's already taken my organisation and my members two years of hard, self-critical effort to get where we are, and we're nowhere near to finishing the journey we want to make. We want to ensure and assure that every single one of our 3,500 surveyors have proven and demonstrable competency to work on any given scheme, be that a kitchen extension, a HRRB or the Shard, and that systems and audits are in place to make sure that's what happens on the ground. Why should competency begin and end with HRRBs? I'm sure if you're having your loft conversion done, you want to know that the person who's regulating that is competent to do so. <laughs> so where is your organisation and how will you move forward as duty holders? Are you ready? And if not, why are you waiting? The Minister's told Parliament that all 53 recommendations of the Hackett Review will be implemented in some way. LABC wants to see this change and I'm determined to see the change fully adopted in LABC. So what's happening now? MH, MHCLG have a lot to do. People representing LABC, NFCC and the HSE are working flat out with officials to prepare our way forward and the JCA. We've pilot groups with early adopters and we're all looking at our own services. There'll need to be other legislative changes and the documentation of the new system needs to be created. Sanctions and penalties for failures have yet to be reviewed. Importantly, and I think officials are only just realising what happens in real life, a shared digital system will need to be created between regulators to document the golden thread. Ideally, duty holders will be included in this system and perhaps others also who, who live and work in these buildings. My view is the digital system isn't as problematic as people think. Local authorities and fire authorities have already got a lot of information um, and, and we've already mapped it. And, and, but the pooled together, there definitely needs to be one accessible cloud-based system shared by all. And so what finally am I saying to you here today? You'll have to rethink. Your organisation will have to rethink. Those organisations that you deal with will also have to rethink what they do. It needs self-criticism, corporate honesty, leadership, training, holding a mirror up to ourselves and an understanding of quality management processes. And lip service, I'm afraid, just won't do if we're going to prevent the Grenfell type scenario ever happening again. There's no time to lose, so we need to in a northern way, get off our backsides and do something. Stop waiting to be told. Thank you very much.